Hello and welcome. My name is Andrei Sakalov. I'm CG artist, generalist, and developer. And today I'm happy to present you my new add on for Blender called Stacks. What this add on does, it allows you to compile stacks from the operations which you can perform in edit mode in Blender and then control their settings procedurally. The add on is completely free. You can download it from my page on Boosty. It is mainly on Russian, but here is English translation, so you can understand what's going on. So here is the installation file, stacks.zip. You can press download. Also, you can download my grid breaker add-on, text change and some other add-ons from here. After you've downloaded the zip file, don't unpack it. Go to Blender, Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, click Install, specify the path to the zip file you've downloaded, select it, press Install add-on. After that, it appears here. Enable checkbox, close Blender Preferences, and then you can find it here in the end panel in the Stacks tab. To add a stack, you need some object to be selected and active. As we have a default cube selected and active, we can press plus button and it will add a stack to this cube. Currently, this is empty. We can choose from the scene stacks here in this tab stack, but currently we have nothing to choose from, so we need to create a new stack. We press a new stack and here we can choose a new stack. To add an operator, we press a plus button, specify the type. For example, let's enter edit mode. It is not necessary, but this is how we will see what we are doing. Let's, for example, select type generate and below we can choose the exact operator from the generate tab. For example, let's add a bevel. Let's add offset. And here we can see it does pretty much the same that the bevel modifier does. Let's add segments to a two, profile to one. What's the point? You will ask. Let me explain. Let's add an ASM operator and put it before the generate bevel. Let's change type to select and let's change the select to all. And here we can choose what we are selecting. This affects these parameters. So we can select vertices, edges and faces. If we have selected only faces, the selection mode has turned to the face selection and after we do the generate be well, we got only those edges selected. Now we can add another operator, for example, hide. Let's hide all unselected faces. We have hided all unselected faces. Great. And now, for example, we decide that we wanted to add a subdivision to those edges. We can add a generate subdivide operator, but it will subdivide all the faces. At least if we don't place it before generate be well. So let's press this arrow button several times. It will create generate subdivide. Let's see how it looks. But now we are be all the edges selected. We can add another operator before generate be well. For example, select sharp and it will select only the sharp edges. After that, we can add the bevel, hide unselected, and we can add a subdivisions level here, for example, or leave it at one. We can also smooth it if we want to. And all the other operators will be procedurally updated, which I think is pretty cool. For example, let's add generate duplicate and again add another operator and place generate duplicate before hide unselected. So again, We've beveled sharp edges, duplicated those faces, and hide everything else. Now we can select random faces. Select random, choose face, increase ratio. But for this operation, I would add another stack. And I'll show you why just in a moment. Let's add another stack, add a new stack. So the first stack will be called, for example, base form. And the second stack will be called random grid. So let's do the following. Change type to select, select random, increase ratio up to 0.2, generate split by edges. What it basically does is splits all the selected edges. After that, let's add an transform scale operation. It basically scales selected elements, but we can do it uniformly if we check this link icon and now it scales them 
along the mid endpoint, but we can change the pivot point to individual origins, and all those faces will be scaled along the individual origins, which is cool. But before I do it, I decide, for example, so I would like not to only split those polygons and scale them along the individual origins, but I would like to generate, subdivide them. So now I've got this result. And after that I decide, hmm, it will be cool to repeat this stack of operations, select random, generate subdivide, generate split, transform scale, to repeat all those stack operations one more time. And the next very cool feature of this add-on, I can increase repeat, and this will perform the same operations one more time, or three times, or four times, or even more. And for example, if I don't want those triangles, here I can put generate subdivide after generate split, add another operator, generate split after that, split by edges, here. Split by edges here, and split by edges here. Oh, no. First of all, we split selected, and then on the next generate split, we split them by edges. Here it starts to work. So we can increase repeat up to 5, for example. And then we can add yet another stack called extrude random. Add a new stack to the scene. So here, now we can choose from three stacks. Add an operator called select random. Once again, we select random faces, for example, up to 0.15. We add a generate extrude operation along the individual origins, for example. Increase it up to 0.12, something like this. Add another operator. Select more. Where is it? Here it is. More. Oh, but before this, I would like to probably deselect everything. So I add another operator. Select, deselect. Select none. Here it is. Select none. Then I select random. Generate extrude. Then I select more. I can't understand why, uh, why those polygons are being selected. I think two will be enough. Then I add an operator called hide, selected. And then I want to save my project just in case. By the way, I can toggle object mode. And after that, I press repeat several times until all the faces I need are extruded. Cool, right? But this is not all. I would like for this extrusion to be a random on each iteration. I mean, each time when we repeat this tag, I want this generate extrude operator to extrude faces on some random value here. This can be done in the interpolation tab, which appears after number of repeats increases up to something greater than one. So we had two repeats and we got this interpolation tab. Let's increase it up to 10. Let's change type to random and now on every iteration, it extrudes polygons on some random value in the range between minimum and maximum. So I can procedurally control it from here. Also, I can do the same with a select random operator. I want it to be, for example, not a random, but Bezier. So I would like that the ratio, I mean, how much polygons are selected, would start at point 0.1 and would end at about, I don't know, 0.75 until all the polygons are used here, maybe even one. Well, almost all polygons. Here how it looks now. And I would like to see change on each iteration also. So we got a 10 repeat, 10 iterations. So I press here 10 and every time the random seed changes on each repeat iteration. And so here we got a result. We can increase the number of repeats up to 15, for example, then we can lower down this max ratio a bit. And here we got uh, our result. And now, if I, for example, decide that those borders are too wide for me, I mean borders where those cubes are growing, 
I go back to the base form to the generate BOL, lower down offset or increase offset, as well as I can change any other parameter here. For example, I can change the number of sub devices up to two, and it will be splitting each polygon on each iteration two times, giving us more geometry. Come and save. What is another cool feature? This is all procedural, so you can press Edit Original, and here is our cube we have started with. If we need to make some changes with this cube, let's select this polygon, press I, press E to extrude this face, and if we hit Edit Original once again, all these stacks of the operations will be updated for the new geometry. Or, if you, for example, would like to add another object, for example, this cube, GX, put it here, tab, let's add some fun geometry, I, E, I don't know, I, E, something like this, I, E. We can add a stack to it, choose from the stacks that this object uses, and those stacks will be applied to this object. If you've got Update All button enabled, and you add in some stacks that any object in the scene already uses, all the objects which use this stack will be updated. It can take pretty much time, so I disable Update All button, choose the stack base form here, maybe I'll lower Generate Be Well, just a touch. Again, Update All, I disable it. Then I add another stack, choose Random Grid from here, Generate Subdivide, probably I would love to decrease number of cuts to one to speed up things. Add another stack, our last stack, and here we've got it. Don't forget to add repeats as much as you need to this stack. Probably I'll increase number of cuts again. And so here we've got our updated object. If you need to make any edits, for example, that are extruding a bit too much for this object, we can go to Generate Extrude, lower down maximum values a bit, or you can make any changes to any operator. So basically, this is how it works. One more another cool feature is that all those parameters are animatable. You can enable this icon here, and you will be able to control those values. For example, let's make it smaller, press I, go to frame 30 or 82. Be careful, because when animation is enabled, it updates all the animated stacks on any frame change. So you probably want to disable Live Update button, first of all, and uh, probably I want also to disable Update All here, and uh, decrease number of repeats here to make things a bit faster. Or if I want to this stack on this object to work independently from this stack on this object, I may want to duplicate this stack. It can be done while this stack is selected by pressing this button, duplicate stack. I press duplicate stack and it makes a full copy of this stack except the animation. So let's ensure that animation on this stack is disabled. Clear keyframes. I select this object, stack copy. Solidify, let's call it solidify. Go to the first frame, press I button to insert the keyframe. Go to the 30th frame, increase it up to, for example, 0.1. Press the I button and this mesh will be animated. You can animate almost all parameters of any mesh operator. Unfortunately, it doesn't affect the exports of the animations. For example, if you want to export this to FBX, OBJ, ABC files, all the animation will be ignored. It is way too much complicated to implement this for me, but you may render animation. You should render it not with render, render animation or Ctrl F12 as you used to. Here is a special render animation operator. The only thing be sure the file format in the output settings is set to something like image format, like BMP, Iris, PNG, JPEG, TIFF, and others. It doesn't render into movie formats as AVAJPEG, AVARO, FMPEG, video, etc. Only image sequences are enabled, 
but once they are rendered, it is pretty easy to convert them into the video file using the video sequencer in Blender or any other third-party applications. This is the main features. So let me briefly show you what types of operators and what operators in them are included in this add-on. I'll open a new Blender file. I'll be using default cube. Jump into stacks tab, add a stack, add new stack, add an operator. So we'll start with transform. Transform is a simple transform operations like grab, scale. You can scale individual axes or synchronized axes and rotate. This is not transforms of the object, but the transforms of the selected geometry. So for example, if I select random faces before rotation and then rotate them, only selected faces will be rotated. Here it is. This is all about transform type. The next type is add primitive. Let's add primitive. And surprisingly, it adds a primitive like cylinder or monkey or grid or plane or torus or any other primitives with all the settings. It is exactly the same when you add a shift A mesh, plane, cube, circle, all those primitives are here. The next type is hide. With this type you can hide selected elements, you can hide unselected elements, you can reveal all hidden elements or skip, you just skip this operator, it does nothing. The next type is deform. There are a bunch of operations. For example, let's subdivide selected polygons, generate subdivide a couple of times. Then we add deform. We can use randomize. We can use to sphere. We can use shear. Here you specify the axis around which shearing is performed and the orientation axis. It works like this in the local or global coordinates. Smooth smoothes selected vertices. Warp does something strange which mesh transform warp operator does. I'm not sure what exactly it does, but sometimes it can be pretty funny to play with. I'll remind you that all these parameters are animatable. So warp, push and pull, and shrink and fatten. The next type of the operators are normals. Normals are all the operations with normals, such as recalculate outside and recalculate inside. Let's turn on backface calling and recalculate them inside. So now the normals of the polygons are recalculated inside. Then we can add normals, recalculate outside, and they will be recalculated outside. Or you can flip normals, it will do the same effect in this case. Here you can assign a shade smooth for certain polygons. You can enable auto smooth from here, it is in the normal step. You can mark sharp. You can clear sharp from the selected edges. Shade flat makes the shading of the selected elements flat. The next type is select. And here is a lot of instruments. They can be in a different order because Blender, for some reason, changes order of these menus and I don't know how to make them stable. So here you can select all the polygons. You can select none of the polygons, which means deselect polygons or vertices or edges or faces. You can select non-manifold elements. You can select existing vertex group, but the selection of the vertex group can work pretty unstable. Invert means inverting the selection. Sharp, we select only sharp edges or adjacent faces. Interior faces, I'm not sure what it means. Boundary loop, loose, random, which is pretty fun for procedurally generating some sci-fi stuff. Faces by sides, which means how many sides polygons have. And the special operator is custom. 
It is the special additional operator which I have written specially for this add-on. It selects vertices in the following ways. You choose which orientation we are using, local or global. You choose whether we select the vertices below the center or above the center or some other. For example, here I want to select all the vertices below the center of the mesh on the z-axis. I play with the center along the z-axis and you see that vertices start to be selected. I can change the axis here, select vertices on the x-axis or on the y-axis, below or above this threshold. Also, you can select vertices around the sphere. Here I move the sphere and the vertices start to be selected or select by connected faces. For example, I want to select all the vertices which have less than four adjacent faces or I can invert it and select only faces which have more or equal, for example, four adjacent faces. Edges Connected does the same with the edges. And I think this operator can be pretty useful in some cases. So this is about select operator. The next step is clean up. The clean up allows you to clean up loose geometry, merge geometry by distance, at cursor, at center, collapse them. It allows you to delete vertices or edges or faces or only faces, you know, all what X button does. Decimate allows you to unsubdivide or collapse vertices and reduce geometry in some other ways. And dissolve just dissolves vertices, faces or edges. So this is what cleanup does. Fill allows you to fill selected with a face. For example, let's clean up, delete faces before that and select all and select boundary loop. After that, I press fill and for example, fill. It fills selected loop with the polygons or it can do the grid fill or add just edge or face. For example, let's add another operator called generate subdivide after select all like this. So here we can do the grid fill. Here we can fill holes or just fill with edges or add edge or face. Like if you press F or bridge edge loops, if it is possible, in this case it doesn't. So this would fill does. And the next step is none, which is default. When you add an operator, it does nothing. And the next step is generate. It is the main source of fun, I think. And what generate does generally it generates additional geometry, which didn't exist before. So you can subdivide, you can bevel, you can transform polygons to quads or triangulate them. You can use boolean here. For boolean, this is a pretty fun thing. For example, let's add a cube, add primitive or a monkey. Let's add a monkey. Put it here. Then you can, in generate boolean, use either another object existing in the scene and uh, it works all the same as if you would add a boolean modifier or you can use selection and it will try to cut the selection from other. It doesn't work good in this case. Maybe I should add something more easy to process like this. No, oh, here it is. So I have added an UV sphere and with boolean I've cut it out from the cube. I can move it, I can rotate it and it continues to be cut out from the cube procedurally. Boolean, you know, pretty fun to play with. The next thing is duplicate, which predictably duplicates selected elements. You can poke polygons like this. You can solidify polygons. You can extrude polygons. By default, it extrudes them in the one direction you specify. Or you can press individual faces and uh, it will extrude faces along the normals. You can split selected. Here it becomes splitted 
You can split by edges, you can split by words. In some cases it works, in some it doesn't. As well as the operator, because I didn't make any changes with the Blender operators themselves. They work all the same, they do in the edit mode. So the next is subdivide, which we use a lot. The next one is inset, which allows you to inset polygons thickness, make them inset along the face, and the depth works as extrusion. And uh, this is actually pretty useful and even more useful than extrude itself, because extrude can only extrude individual faces along the normals. And uh, the inset can extrude the group of faces along the normals. For example, I add ratio here in the select random to select two polygons. They are adjacent. So when I press inset and add the depths, they are extruded as a group along their normals. Relative offset, outset, select inset, individual. This all works as it does in the inset operator. The next operator is a mirror, which mirrors selected elements along some axis. It works pretty weird for my opinion, but this is how original Blender mirror operator does. It doesn't do the same as a mirror modifier. It is the mirror from the uh, three mirror, transform mirror. Here it is. So it does the same. Well, triangulate just makes a triangles from the selected polygons. Loop cut allows you to loop cut selected polygons while edge index set to minus one. It doesn't loop cut anything. As you start to increase this number, you choose the edge along which the cut will be performed. So you can add cuts, you can smooth it, and do all the same you can do with a loop cut. And the final operator here is a wireframe, which does all the same the wireframe modifier does, but only with selected elements. You can add a boundary here, you can add offset here, you can use a replace, you can make relative, all the same. And the last type is assign. Assign allows you to assign different things to selected elements. For example, you can assign material here, and now this material is assigned only to those two elements, but as soon as we get only one material here, it is assigned to all elements. But let's make it reddish, for example. And if we add another material and make it, I don't know, bluish, we can assign another material to those polygons and it will be assigned. Let's add metallic a bit. All right, so you can assign vertex group, but assigning and uh, selecting vertex group doesn't work pretty stable. I'll try to fix it later, but at the moment it can cause errors. You can assign bevel here, which you can then use in the bevel modifier. For example, if we set it to weight, it will add a bevel weight to selected edges. You can assign a skin size for a skin modifier. Here it is. It doesn't always work, I don't know what's the reason. You can mark edges as sharp, you can set a crease for a subdivision modifier like this. You can mark seams for UV. Unfortunately there's no UV operators because I'm not sure how to implement them here. But once you have done all what you wanted with your mesh, you can then unwrap it manually or using some third-party add-ons or plugins. Well, so basically this is how it works. The final thing I want to mention, there is a preset tab where you can save your stack as a preset. This section is still pretty complicated, so the main idea you press save stack, you choose from text editor files or create a new file, stack preset for example, after you created it, this preset is saved to this stack preset file, which you can open in the Blender text editor here. So here is the preset file. And uh, after you did it, you can download it, for example, into another scene. Let's add new scene. Let's add some mesh cube. So if we add stacks here, they are not added to the cube because all the stacks are attached to the particular scene that were created at. So to add the stack here, you should load it from the file, press load, and so your stack is loaded to another scene, and you can use it in your other scene. 
to save it to the external file, you can press text, save or save as, save it to your computer as a txt file or as a py python file, then load to another project and use it there to load presets. It is maybe not very comfortable system, but at least you can save presets in this way. I'm not sure, maybe I'll try to fix it to make it a bit more handy. So thanks for watching. Be sure to check out the link in the description to my Boosty page, where you can download this add-on for free, and where you can subscribe, donate, and to become my sponsor, my patron. The Boosty is pretty much like a patron, but the patron is currently blocked in my country. By the way, as well as Twitter, Facebook and Instagram, so if you're writing me into some social media which you used to use, I sorry, I cannot read it because all they are blocked in my country currently. And for the same reason, I ask you to give me a bit of informational support, so share this video in your social media, because I cannot, except for the Russian social media sites. Leave your comments, subscribe to this channel, hit the like button, Hope you like this add-on, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.